Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Dark and Darker. The game is not well optimized, but the maps are pretty small and also all those effect and graphic setting are pretty basic, so it's running that well, honestly. Uh, if you have like a very old computer or an integrated uh, GPU, you can probably struggle with this game. So I'm going to show you how to optimize your windows and after that, what are the best settings inside of the games. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the record uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option, make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance um, on a de desktop computer. It should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have four gig of RAM, eight gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. Now inside of the game, so first of all, uh, anti-aliasing, if you compare Epic to low, you can expect a nice 10% boost. And honestly, the aliasing in this game is not really bad. So when you put it at low, you will not have like a crazy amount of aliasing. So definitely this one should be at low. 
For texture, it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your video card. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot for this game. So if you have 4 gig and more of VRAM, go epic. 3 gig high, 2 gig medium, and less than 2 gig, go with low. For po post processing quality, this one is a bit weird. If you compare uh, epic to low, you can expect a 5% boost in your FPS. But the thing is, post processing, uh, when you put it at high or even epic, uh, the game is very blurry, so I don't like it for a game like that. So I just put it at low, and you will have a nice boost in your FPS. Visual effect, I recommend also to go with low. Um, when you're fighting, a lot of random drops in my FPS. So when you put it at low, you stabilize your FPS. And a, a game like this with PvP, you don't want like losing 40, 50 FPS because you're fighting. So super important to go with low. Rendering scale, I don't recommend to touching it. Just go at 100. You don't want to downscale for now or upscale. Uh, after the old guide, if you're still struggling and you don't have any image scaling technology on your video card, definitely maybe test something like 90, but under 90 you will see that your game is too much, it's too blurry, you will see pixels and stuff like that, so I don't recommend to do that. For display mode, I recommend to go full screen, don't use the window full screen, I had like some random stuttering when I was using it, so super important to use full screen. And also, I just make sure that you're using your native resolution of your monitor, so if it's a 2K monitor, go with 2K, 1080p, go with 1080p. For the max frame rate, really depend on your objective. Uh, first of all, I don't use uh, the 400 slider. I had some weird issue with the, the temp on my card. A bit like New World when they're launching it. Uh, it's like my card need to generate like 400 FPS in the menu. And uh, I, anyway, it was weird. But uh, yeah, if you're using G-Sync or FreeSync technology and you need to stay in your range, just, just lock it. Uh, in the amount that you need. Uh, if you have a 60 Hz monitor and you have issue with your thermals, don't go too crazy with the max frame rate limit. Maybe you should limit it at 60 because sometimes uh, you can have throttling issue with your CPU and GPU and you will start lagging. And if you just want like maximum FPS, just unlock it at 400, uh, you will have the lowest input lag. So this is pretty much it guys for my FPS guide for Dark and Darker. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.